So as you guys can see, it's pretty self-explanatory about the tripod part of it, right? Select a, a good tripod, preferably in a black or neutral color that's not shiny silver. Uh, you don't have to go crazy with it. Obviously, you get what you pay for, so if you want to spend the money on a Manfrotto, I'm not going to tell you no. You know, I, I wish I had a Manfrotto. They, they come and go out of my life, but uh, unfortunately, I can't keep one. Someday, though. Someday. All right, so we're just starting with a cheap tripod. Like I said, about two feet tall, give or take a little bit, with uh, enough adjustability that you can deploy it and, and shoot from the standing position, right? So the core of this video is gonna be about how to make this little saddle, right? Which is your actual rifle rest. So we start with what's commonly called the shoe or the camera mount, right? So what this is, is a little dovetailed thing that sits on top of your tripod that rocks in and locks kind of like a LaRue throw lever mount for a rifle, uh, rifle base, okay? So this is what we're gonna build off of to make our rifle rest. So this is the one that came with Burr's tripod here. We come over here to my tripod, we can go ahead and pop this guy out, right? So here's the saddle separate. Now, alternatively, what you can do is you can get different shoes. You can potentially order them aftermarket from the company or call them like, hey, I want to buy a couple extra shoes and they should sell them to you cheap. Um, and what you can do is you can build different saddles for different applications, right? This one is permanently affixed to my saddle because I'm only ever going to use this tripod for shooting. Alternatively, what I can do is I can get a different shoe that I use for photography equipment. I can mount my night vision optics on it. I can mount my spine scope on it. I can do that. Alternatively, what you can do is when you're setting up your, your tripod, take a trip to the hardware store, and what you can do is you can go ahead and find hardware, and you can modify your tripod so that you can still use it with a hog saddle or without the hog saddle. So by replacing this screw with something like a thumb screw that will engage from underneath, then what I can do is I can have it where, all right, one tripod to rule them all. Uh, if you do a thumb screw method, which is more convenient to be able to spin, then what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to take the tripod, you're gonna have to take the arm here, and you're gonna have to drill a hole through it so the screw can come up through the hole and then through the base, right? So basically, you're just taking it off and you're, you're, the screw's gonna be floating and loose. Alternatively, you can find a different size screw that you're gonna have to use a screwdriver. Uh, this one uses a flat tip, so it's very easy. You can use a coin. Uh, by selecting your hardware, you can you can choose how versatile you want it. It's really up to your imagination how modular you make your tripod. It's one of those scenes where I don't want wiggle, I don't want movement, especially when I'm shooting with a rifle. So that's why I choose to permanently attach that shoe right to the saddle itself. So it's, it's one of those scenes where I get a more stable firing platform by permanently attaching versus uh, the versatility that I lose by having modular accessories. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start by removing the shoe. Okay, so you look at the shoe, you see what you what you have to work with. So this is recessed here, which is a good thing because it's going to give us room for uh, the new hardware. Okay, so what you want to see is on the tripod, some shoes will only lock in one way, other ones are set up where you can put them on left or right, so they're they're non-directional. Okay, so you want to confirm that. And if you look at the shoe itself, sometimes there's one shelf, one angle that's sloped slightly different. Uh, so it's, it's important before you do your build that you figure out how that shoe sits in uh, the tripod itself and what's the most secure, which has the least amount of play. All right? So we're going to start by taking our shoe out, examining it, seeing what's going on, and we put it back in. So what we're going to build the saddle off of is we're going to build the saddle off of this little sheet metal uh, framing bracket that you can find at any Lowe's or Home Depot. And what this is for, is this for framing two by fours, right? So it's, it's springy, it's made out of steel, it's galvanized, so it won't rust that easy. And they're about five bucks. So if you go to any hardware store that sells uh, lumber and framing stuff, this is just for joining two two by fours. So you'd hammer one to a two by four and you'd lay another two by four in and then hammer it and it would just basically create a more rigid joint. Uh, like I said, it's cheap, they're like five bucks. So this is what we're gonna base our saddle off of. So basically what we want to do is we want to put it on here and we want to see how it sits. What you might have to do is you might have to drill an additional hole based on how your, your tripod shoe is set up, right? With this one, with that big center hole, it sits pretty centered on the shoe itself, so I don't think we need to drill another hole. Now if you look closely, you can see with the factory screw that's meant to screw into the camera, it's just barely too short. I can't really get uh, a nut to thread on that. I mean, I can try, but I already did earlier, it's not gonna work out. And even if I did get a nut to screw on it, it it's not a secure enough bite. What I'm gonna have to use is I'm gonna have to use a washer to make up for that larger that larger size. So I'm gonna take the shoe off. 
Now we're, at, we're not gonna need the tripod for a while. We're gonna be working off this shoe. So the first step is to remove the mounting screw because we realized that the factory mounting screw included with the, the shoe, it's not long enough to properly clear the, the base here, the saddle that we're building. So what we wanna do is we wanna remove this. Now there's no like proven technique how to remove the screw because it's kind of captured in there. So what you can do is you can try pounding out with a hammer. You can get maybe a good purchase with a pair of pliers. And you basically just wanna work it out. So once you, once you get it, it removed, let's see if we can get it quick. These things can be tricky. So this one's being stubborn. Uh, sometimes there's like a little C-clip that captures the screw into the plate. Some of them have them, some of them don't. So this guy here is, uh, is kind of tight. We're gonna put this in the vise and we're just gonna pound it out because this one wants to be stubborn. So basically the threads are larger than inside shaft, so I think this one was just pressed in, and basically we just pressed it back out by hitting it with a hammer. Like I said, some of them have a little C-clip that you can just pull off with a pair of needle nose pliers or a pair of hemostats. Uh, they're all different, right? So whatever you need to do to remove it without completely trashing the shoe, you know, get it done. So with cameras and most optics like spotting scopes, night vision, thermal, stuff like that, uh, what you end up with is a threaded insert somewhere on the optic, right? So with the majority of threaded optics, it's half inch by 20 threads, okay? So if we take that old one I just removed and screw in this PVS-14, you see it threads right in, okay? Same thing with most like point and shoot cameras. So that's that, that half inch by 20 inch thread. So if you wanna make an adapter that's universal, look for half inch by 20 threads. That's gonna fit the, the largest selection of optics out there, like night vision and cameras and spotting scopes and stuff like that, right? Alternatively, you see it's a pretty small shaft, and since we're gonna do a permanent build with this, we're gonna choose a beefier screw. So this guy is a little bit bigger, uh, a little bit bigger in diameter than the factory one, and as a result, it doesn't wanna go through the hole. So what we're gonna have to do is we're just gonna have to drill that hole out slightly larger so this can clear clean through. So select a drill bit that's about the same diameter as whatever hardware you're gonna be using, whatever screw you wanna use. And all we're gonna do is we're just gonna open that hole up a little bit. So we drill a little bit and it passes clean through. So that didn't take very long. So the next step to building the saddle is to go ahead and sit this through like that. Now you can see it's gonna protrude a little bit and that's fine, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a washer on top of it to eat up that, that dead space and we're gonna take a nut and we're gonna screw that nut down. So once you have this all the way tightened down, you're gonna see it's gonna protrude up uh, past the nut, right? Now what you can do is you go ahead and take a Dremel tool and you can cut that down if you want uh, or you can leave it there because what we're gonna do is we're gonna cover that up with foam anyway so as long as it's not a really long screw and it's protruding more than I'd say about a half inch to an inch on the inside of the, the saddle, I wanna worry about it. So since we're doing a, a permanent build on this, you can see even if I have it tightened down all the way, there's a chance for it to move left, right, uh, and have some wobble. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna back this nut back off and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna glue the base itself to the mount itself. We're gonna do that <clears throat> by using handy dandy JB Weld, the fix all. So I have this uh, this rattle can cap. I got my JB Weld, so we're just gonna use that as a means of stirring the JB Weld. So I'm gonna squirt a little bit of JB Weld in there, right? And then what we're gonna do, screw an equal amount of hardener in there. Now you don't have to use JB Weld, you can use uh, epoxy, whatever you like to use. But this is what I had handy, and so it works out pretty well. So I have equal amounts of JB Weld. Now all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stir this up until it's a consistent color, which is usually kind of like a steel gray color. So this, since this is a, a permanent mod, what I'm gonna do is I'm even gonna put a little bit of this stuff on the threads itself of the hardware. What I'm going to do is I'm going to basically just slather the base down here with the JB Weld so that when it cures, it's going to be a nice secure fit to that framing bracket that we're using for the, the saddle build. All right, so we have the slather down with the JB Weld. Now all we're going to do is we're going to take that shelving or that framing bracket and just sit it on there, right? Next, I'm going to take a washer, drop my washer on. <clears throat> and the same thing with the nut. Now what I'm gonna do is just like I put a little bit of JB Weld on the threads, I'm gonna put a little bit on this guy too. So once it cures, it's gonna be on there like a rock. It's gonna be become one. Go ahead, 
Just throw that on there like that. And next is we're gonna use a, a wrench or a tool to tighten down that nut. So once I have the washer and the nut threaded on, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tighten it down as tight as I can get it, right? So with this hardware, I have a, I can put a flat tip or a Phillips on the back side, and I can just put a pair of pliers on the nut itself to hold it in place as I tighten it down. It's nice and tight, right? And there we go. You see a little bit of JB Weld squirting out of the side. So JB Weld takes a little bit of time to set up, which is a good thing. So that's why I don't want to use like five minute epoxy, right? I want a little bit of play time so I'm not in a rush to set this up. So once I get that plate installed, I'm going to take my tripod. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that it's sitting on the tripod how I want it centered, uh, more or less, and it's, it's aligned. So we have this, more or less, it's covered in a line. Snap it on there. I think about it, so with the, the adjustment here, I like to have this like this to the rear, so I can adjust it if I'm shooting on an incline, I can adjust the head, right? So for me, I like to have the controls facing facing me when I'm on the gun. So we have all the, the locking screws facing to the rear. So I intend to use the saddle facing this way, right? So we look at it, like I said, it doesn't have to be exact, but the closer I get it, the better. So for me, that's pretty good right there. So I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this off. Is there a rag around here? There's a bag. Here's a bag. I don't want a bag, I want a rag. If but rag has a definition, it could be a bag. Technically, yes. I suppose. 